Philadelphia Eagles OTAs get underway tomorrow on Thursday from the NovaCare Complex in South Philadelphia. So coming up on today's show, we're going to take a look and break down the top position battles to watch out for for the rest of the week. Before we dive into all of that, though, if you're craving year-round daily coverage of the Philadelphia Eagles, make sure you subscribe right now. And we're in a fun sub battle with a couple of our other NFC East foe channels here at Chat Sports. We're beating the Giants, beating the Dallas Cowboys, but losing to the fraudulent and new Washington Commanders report. So make sure you hit that sub button. And with that, let's start the show. All right, let's do this thing. This is Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Chase Senior. No matter where you are or how you're tuned in, as always, thank you for tuning in to us here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. Today's show is sponsored by Kanzuri. You can get 15% off their height-boosting and stylish shoes at kanzuri.com slash chat. Promo code chat for that deal to apply. Fellas, are you tired of feeling insecure about your height? Kanzuri makes shoes that can add up to 2.8 inches to your height discreetly. Women get heels, makeup, push-up bras. Why can't men get a confidence boost as well? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kanzuri shoes, not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable as we're showing you here with all these images. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes. Come on, grandpa! But instead, fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without that height increase. The height insoles integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack. And for a limited time only, Kanzuri offering our viewers of the show an exclusive discount of 15% off on top of their up to 30% site-wide discount. All you have to do, use that code chat at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I dot com slash chat when I want to get high. We put on a pair of Kanzeris here at Chat Sports. We're going to put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. Lounge back shoes. You also have some dress shoes as well. Athletic wear. They have it all. Promo code chat for that deal to help you out saving some money. All right. Without further ado, really excited for Philadelphia Eagles OTAs to get underway on Thursday because this finally means that we can talk real football instead of some of the trade rumors, trade speculation out there. And it means that the regular season and the preseason is going to be here before we know it, right? As of this recording, 99 days until the start of the NFL season. So let's take a look at the top position battles to look out for during Eagles OTAs. Position battle number one. Who starts at right guard? Will Cam Jurgens hold it down there? He was drafted to be Jason Kelsey's replacement, but Jason Kelsey continues to be a legendary figure in the city of Philadelphia and one of the best Eagles of all time. That number 62 should definitely get retired at some point, but Cam Jurgens was drafted to be a center. Is he big enough to play at right guard? I know he's athletic enough. In the preseason last year, he was able to get out on some of those pool blocks out in space to that second and third level, open up some running lands for some of the running backs. He looked great in space, but can he play right guard? Or is it going to be the rookie Tyler Steen, who at Alabama primarily played tackle, but when he was drafted by Philadelphia, they labeled him as a guard. He might not have the quickness to play tackle, at the National Football League level, but if he slides into right guard, I do think that he can be a good player. Can he unseat Cam Jurgens? Jurgens is going to be the Kelsey replacement whenever Kelsey decides to retire. Or if both of them flounder here, are the Eagles going to have to bring in a veteran right guard to start there to replace Isaac Sayamalu? Position battle number two. Who's going to be the lead running back? I think this is the most intriguing training camp OTA offseason battle here. I really like DeAndre Swift. That trade from Howie Roseman, absolutely spectacular. But this Eagles running back room, it's really good. On top of the fact you have Jalen Hurts as a lethal runner and the best offensive line in football, DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Gainwell, Rashad Penny, Boston Scott. That's one of the deeper backfields in the NFL. Swift 
led all running backs in yards per touch last year. He has great number one ability. He hasn't been healthy consistently. He hasn't missed a lot of games. He's just always been nicked up to a certain degree. Rashad Penny, on the other hand, a physical bull. I like him more so in that like Garrett Blunt 2017 role, short yardage back. You lean on him sometimes when you're trying to send a message. A guy who's not afraid to run you over, he's just been injured so much. Games played in his career since being a first-round pick out of San Diego State, 14, 10, 3, 10, and 5. That's a little bit of a problem. And then Kenneth Gainwell, fantastic running back last year. In fact, one of the most productive backs among all teams left in the big dance last year. But is he an every down back? I think the Eagles go a little bit running back by committee. I'm leaning Swift as being like the primary back, but in this offense, there might not be a quote-unquote primary back. Position battle number three. The battle for wide receiver three behind A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. It's going to be a good battle between Olamide Zacchaeus as well as Quez Watkins. Quez is a guy who always flashes in OTAs, as well as in training camp, not wearing pads, or you're wearing pads, there's no contact, his blazing speed, able to help him win a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups because covering him on a one-on-one -on -one drill is very, very difficult to do. But when it translates to the regular season, that same success does not translate. He's become very, very inconsistent and somewhat disappointing. Whereas Zacchaeus last year was the Falcons' number two wide receiver behind Drake London. Part of that is the reason that the Falcons were extremely thin at wide receiver. But Zacchaeus is quick. 40-yard dash didn't back that up, but when you watch the tape, he's fast. He plays quick, and he certainly has a lot of ability. Is he going to be able to stave off Quez Watkins. That is going to be very, very interesting. Next position battle here. Number four. What is the starting safety tandem going to be? Sign Terrell Edmonds to that one-year contract in free agency. Reed Blankenship, the UDFA from last year, made the 53-man roster. Right now, that is the inside track at free safety, strong safety with Edmonds and Blankenship. But you drafted Sidney Brown in the third round. I like his instinctual style, his instinctual ability. He has a knack for really making big plays on the football, whether it be a fumble forced, fumble recovered, an interception, interception going the other way. Can you put him in the box, utilize him there? I think you can. He has a ton of experience under his belt playing with Illinois last year under Brett Bielma. They were the number one defense in college football. He was a big part of that. In addition to Devin Witherspoon, that was a great secondary. So is that game going to translate? He certainly has a pro body. And then Kevon Wallace, Justin Evans are the backups. Wallace Evans has the backups. I like it. But can Sidney Brown unseat one of those aforementioned players to become a starter in year one? That would be pretty impressive. Position battle number five. And this is really at the position group. What is the linebacker rotation going to be? Of course, Hassan Reddick is going to be your Sam backer, but if he's ever dropping back in coverage after what he did last year and the strengths that he has in rushing the passer, it's just defensive play calling malpractice, right? So I think that, you know, Nicholas Morrow is going to basically replace Kaiser White and then N'Kobe Dean, it's time to step up. Will he wear the green dot as well, receiving some of the play calls from Sean Desai? I love Dean at Georgia. A little bit undersized, but like Brown, very instinctual player. Guy's an absolute dog. Studied engineering at Georgia, so he's clearly smart enough to master this defensive playbook. And people have raved about his character. Looked as though he added a little bit of weight this offseason. He's one of my prime breakout candidates. Position battle number six. Punters are people too. Tyler Zettner, the UDFA out of Kansas State, and Aaron Sipos, the Aussie. Sipos was not good last year, kind of cost the Eagles a little bit in that Super Bowl. Zettner has a monster leg, and don't rule out the fact that he makes this roster over Aaron Sipos. Position battle number seven. What is the defensive line rotation going to be? I've continued to say this here on the airwaves at Chat Sports. I think that the Eagles have one of the best defensive lines in football, but also one of the deepest defensive lines in football as well. Is Jalen Carter going to be able to unseat Fletcher Cox as a starter, or is he going to be the backup? Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, if they're starting for you with your starting front, that's pretty intriguing and a cool story because they both went to Georgia. I think Fletcher Cox is able to stave him off, but 
backup defensive end, backup defensive tackle, some of the third stringers fighting for a roster spot, a Contavious Street, a Marlon to a Palutu. Some of these guys are going to be competing for some playing time and roster spots. What's that rotation going to be? And then lastly, kind of a position coaching battle here, the new coordinators. You know, you lose your OC and your DC. It is very, very difficult to replace those important positions and then have the same amount of success that you had the previous year. So you have Shane Steichen as the new head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. You have Jonathan Gannon, the new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. In comes Brian Johnson as the OC, who has a long relationship with Jalen Hurts. That goes back a long time because Jalen Hurts' dad coached Brian Johnson while he was in high school. And Brian Johnson's done some good work with some quarterbacks at the college and pro level, including his work with Hurts. And then defensively, Sean Desai. Everybody, including myself, wanted Vic Fangio. If Jonathan Gannon didn't tamper, maybe the Eagles would have had Vic Fangio. They got the next best thing, a Vic Fangio disciple at least. These coordinators going to be duking it out to a certain degree, play calling against one another, and I want to see the schemes that they run, some of the plays that they run. Of course, we don't get the full gamut of that because it's OTAs, no contact, no real 11-on-11 11 11 sessions, but either way, very, very interesting nonetheless. All right, if you like the show, hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. Do not forget to subscribe because it's Fly Eagles Fly all day. It's Eagles now. I'm Chase Senior, and we'll catch you next time here on the show.